a gestalt cycle. A gestalt cycle is something we are experiencing all the time. Whatever we're up to, as long as we're awake, we are on one part of the cycle. It starts with a sensation, a feeling in our bodies, like hunger or needing the loo, like Bruce here. The second stage of the cycle is awareness, when we become aware of the sensation. You become aware of a need to do something. The third stage is mobilization. This is when you commit to taking care of the need and prepare to take action. For example, think about what you need to do in order to get to the toilet. The fourth stage is when you take action. You do what is necessary in order to meet your need. In Bruce's case, he excuses himself and walks to the loo and gets ready to... Oh, Bruce! The fifth stage, final contact. When you meet your need, and we all know what Bruce needed. Satisfaction, the sixth stage. Satisfaction that your need has been met. Stage seven is withdrawal. This is letting go to allow for a new sensation to arise. Another gestalt cycle. But of course, we have many needs happening at the same time. For example, although Bruce is hungry, he also wants to hear the end of Shirley's story. Not only that, he's got an email he really needs to be responding to. And sometimes one cycle can interrupt another. Now I want to talk to you about the blocks. And here's where it gets really interesting. When we have a need, we can often create a block that will stop us from fulfilling our need, completing the cycle. The first block is the trickiest one to talk about because it happens so early on in the cycle that the person experiencing the block will never become aware of the need. The need is out of their awareness. This is called desensitization and can often occur for people who have suffered abuse in their childhood. For example, someone shouts at you and you feel nothing. Another block is deflection. This occurs after awareness and is when we bat away the need. For example, someone shouts at you and rather than acknowledging your shame or anger or perhaps sadness, you make a little joke. Another block is interjection. This is all of the shoulds and shouldn'ts we've swallowed over the years. In our example, Bruce might have blocked his need by thinking, I shouldn't interrupt Shirley's story so I won't go to the loo right now. Projection is when we project our thoughts onto other people. Essentially, we guess how other people might be thinking or feeling. In our example, this might happen for Bruce just before he gets to final contact. What if they hear me pee, he might think. They'll think it's disgusting. And then he might decide to hold it in until he gets home. Retroflexion is another block where we actually work against our need. For example, a child needs to do his homework and due to the fear of failure, rather than trying to answer his questions and risk getting them wrong, he retroflects by not doing it at all and will therefore get punished at school. Confluence is a block that occurs when we go with someone else's need rather than our own. For example, Bruce really fancies a shepherd's pie, but Shirley says how wonderful the burgers are, and even though Bruce still prefers the idea of a shepherd's pie, he orders a burger. Egotism, the final block. This might interrupt your satisfaction. For example, Bruce has eaten his burger and has satisfied his hunger, but immediately begins to tell himself that he shouldn't have eaten that and now he's going to get fat. So there you have it, the Gestalt Cycle.